Lazarus was not healed. Lazarus represents certain of our brothers who came to our healing crusades and he went back home the way he came. But he made heaven. That's what we're talking about. That if you have money, God, we praise God. If you don't have, please make heaven. If you are healed, praise God. If you are not healed, make heaven. If you are rich, praise God. If you are not, please make heaven. Because all the riches of this world will end here. That's the brand of gospel that we forfeited over 40 years. And we have produced Christians who now see suffering as if you have sinned. Look at me. I'm a grandfather. I go to mission fields in East Africa where there is no Jesus. I go to mission fields among the Maasai. Where there's no church. There's no mosque. There's no idol house. Not. There's nobody to go there and tell them about Jesus. They take what you bring. But I trek miles. The bath once a month there's no water I have to stop in Kenya to buy as much water as I will need as I cross Namanga border to enter northern Tanzania with my wife and my children I take my children along there because I don't want them to think that the only brand of Christianity they see is the one on television I climb mountains as old as I am because they are poking their head out of the rock speaking Swahili and I have to speak Jambo I have to ask can I come with Bible under my armpit because if he does not approve me to come he could roll the stone against me if I'll be preaching there In December, people have to start going 100 miles on camels to go and bring the crowd. The crowd I see in front of me sitting on bare ground, they are more than the crowd I gather with television. They trek 100 miles to come and hear the word of God. And nobody is ready to go there. Whenever I'm going to United States, whenever I'm going to London, you see men of God. But whenever I'm going to those places, I don't see anybody. Because there's no honorarium. And they're dying in their thousands and hundreds. I'm telling you, we are in a place where they have no idol. They have no mosque. They have no church. They don't have anything. Whatever they you bring, they take. But we have bombarded our brains with comfort as if that is Christianity. That is not Christianity. Christianity is a life of sacrifice. When I was climbing the rocks and halfway through my breath was failing. I'm getting old. Then my second son told me, come down, let me go. By the grace of God, I can sponsor my children in any university in the world. By the grace of God. Don't let me go into that one. Because the dividing line between that testimony and pride is like the edge of razor blade. You never know when you slip to the other side. I don't want to talk about that. But I am telling you, 
that by the grace of God God has done enough for me to go and sit down somewhere and be preaching prosperity to others and be telling them come and see when people are dying in northern part of Kwara state where I come from in northern Bogu beyond Wawa as you approach Benin Republic on market day our brethren we ask brethren to go for evangelism and they asked one woman who was sitting in front of her words do you have Jesus then she thought about it for a while and said uh, and call the next woman that they are asking for a certain commodity that she doesn't have it on the on her tree that maybe she has and directed us to ask 2021 what has the you need Jesus do you have Jesus say Jesus they go and ask that woman maybe she has the item on the tree we know we have lost our pride the hidden around us will testify against us as we sit in our comfort and ignore them government has forgotten about them there's no road we trek we enter the river because there's no bridge whenever i go i don't come back with my clothes we can't wash our clothes the water there if you put your clothes inside you get dirty here because it's mud we wait for the water to settle down before before we the life of christ is a life of sacrifice preaching the gospel is a life of sacrifice the ministry Jesus committed to our hands is a ministry of sacrifice. And this is the alternative community that Jesus is trying to set up. But the allurements of luxury and pleasure keep enticing us out. Look at, look at, look at the arrangement and the plan of God for Abraham. He said, come out of that place, come and stay here. And then the Bible will say that there was famine in Egypt. As there was famine in the place where Abraham was but there is food in Egypt in the days of Abraham this this bait this bait was dangled to Abraham in order to drag Abraham out of the promised land to go to Egypt he survived it in Genesis 26 the Bible says again that there was famine in the promised land. But there was food in Egypt. And God had to say to Isaac, don't migrate, stay in the land. So, second generation survived it. In the third generation of Jacob, the Bible says again, you see, when the devil missed it in Abraham, he, pa he patiently waited for Isaac. When he missed it in Isaac, he waited for Jacob. Why was it that there was always famine by the tenor and generation of these fathers, these patriarchs, and there has always also been food in Egypt? It's the bait to drag them out of the promised land so that they will go to where there is food. And whereas Abraham survived it, Isaac survived it. Jacob did not survive it. Because there was famine in the land at the time of Jacob. And there was food in Egypt. And he migrated to Egypt. And once he entered Egypt, Satan shut the door. And for 400 years, they could not return to the promised land. 